Welcome to Week in Geek, your new comics preview for March 20th. I'm Mike Ortiz. I'm the Chris Brown. What do you got? Well, I'm going to start off here with a, sort of an unusual one, and there's a very specific reason for this one. I'm looking at vibe number two. This book is it's written by Jeff Johns. You know, he, so he likes to put a lot of his stuff in Detroit, and vibe is set in Detroit, mm -hmm. which is really, really neat. But the story here is that Pete Woods was looking for some reference material on Facebook. He didn't want to show the typical... You know, the typical right. Detroit that you see in magazines, the rundown Detroit, just the typical stuff yeah. that you see all the time. So he solicited some pictures uh, of Detroit, to which uh, one of our regulars and a very good friend of ours, Andrew Elia, chimed in and sent him about 300 photos. He threw him a solid, and Andrew is on page one. It looks like he's a homeless person, but that's okay, because <laughs> it's still very clearly Andrew, and it's really, really neat. Times are tough in the DC universe. <laughs> So, uh, you know, I, I saw the book this morning and picked it up and thought, oh, I'm going to see where Andrew's at and see if I can spot him or see mm -hmm. what, what the deal is. Bam, there he is on yeah. the first page. It's, and it's very clearly Andrew. Very, very cool stuff. Uh, if, you, if you know Andrew, if you don't know Andrew, it's still a neat story. Pick up your, your vibe. Issue number one apparently introduces the idea of Darkseid's daughter. Mm. So I'm curious where this is going. Should be cool. cool. And uh, one of our homies is in it. Yeah. Kind of neat. Next, I'm looking at Star Wars Legacy number one. I liked this uh, this book when it was going before, when it was the descendant of Luke Skywalker. Mm -hmm. And I thought it was kind of the Cade Skywalker. It was kind of neat, a really neat idea. This one is now following a descendant of Han and Leia. And that's not the, the only thing that sells me. I like the idea of Star Wars Legacy. I like this, the descendants of our original cast members. Sure, I like the idea of Han and Leia's kids. This is uh, written by Karina Bechko and Gabriel mm. Hardman, with art by Gabriel Hardman. Oh, wow. And I really liked them. Yeah. They were doing that Planet of the Apes stuff. Just solid people. Really, really cool people. Good stuff. And it looks great. I mean, really Gabriel cool. Hardman's artwork is fantastic. Yeah. I think this is going to be a solid book. I can't say enough things about it. I am excited it's about that a, one. kind of a renaissance of Star Wars comics going on right now. It's, it's a good time to be in the Star Wars universe, I mm -hmm. suppose. Then I've got Indestructible Hulk number five. I am a couple issues behind on this, but I, I do really like the idea of it, where mm. he was working for S.H.I.E.L.D., and they were just pointing him at things. Looks like we've got a Tuma it, yes. in this one. There, there's, that, that looks like that's going on, and at first, I wasn't sure what that was at first, but upon looking it yeah. open, I was like, is that some kind of a Planet Hulk thing? And then looking <laughs> in it, I was like, oh, it's a Tuma. All right, good. Yeah, I think it looks cool. The artwork's uh, just absolutely fantastic. You know, artwork by Lionel Francis Yu. Mm, he's great. Indeed. So cool stuff. Check that one out. Then I've got Daredevil number 24. This is uh, written by Mark Wade with art by Chris Samney. This has just been an awesome book. Really cool stuff. Great artwork. Daredevil is, as I've said before, back to where he needs to be. It's a, it's a good book, a fun book. And they, they've gotten past some of the, the darkness. And it's, it's showing through with the, the artists that they're choosing here. And making it just a, a cool, classic feeling Daredevil book. Then I've got, uh, surprisingly, this has actually lasted through my stack and uh, six months here. I'm looking at Deadpool number six. I, I like Brian Posehn. He's doing the writing here. This is this should be the end of that story arc with the, so. the presidents, the, the zombie presidents, if you will, uh, being risen by some sort of a voodoo dude, and, and Deadpool's got to kill them. The cover's great. You got George Washington there saying, I cannot tell a lie. I killed Deadpool with my little hatchet. <laughs> There's a hatchet in his back and a... And a Big stick with an American flag on it stuck through his back. Not a typical American flag. It's got no. some kind of a Jolly Roger on there. Then I'm looking at Superior Spider-Man. I've not had a chance to read this one yet. Kind of curious where this sort of picks up or if they did, in fact, do the deed last issue. Uh, Spider-Man kills someone at the end of last issue. Uh, I've been hanging tight with this thing. I, I thought the writing was still good. That, I think, really crossed the line for me. I, I'm going to read this issue and see what's going on. I, I want to quickly get to that issue nine when they say something's going to happen mm -hmm. and the battle for the brain is over. If, if Doc Ock stays, I'm gone. Um, if they finally get Peter back in there, you know, his ghost's been doing his thing. If they just use this, him killing someone to take him to a, a new low, fine, but get past it. Spider-Man doesn't kill people. I don't care that it's Doc Ock. Spider-Man does not kill people. Why did you show me in the first issue that Peter's conscience can stop Doc Ock from killing someone only to do it here in an incredibly lazy fashion in that issue five? So I hope six comes back out of it and we do something better here. Ah, Dan Slott, you're on thin ice with me, buddy. All right, we've got Exo Man of War number 11. This is great. This is uh, the beginning of Planet Death. 
uh, you know, he, he kind of went up to the planet and confronted everybody. He ends up then uh, giving the armor to try and save his friend. His friend ends up sacrificing himself with the armor, and Eric seems to have gotten it back. Now, what's going to happen here? This seems to be on, you know, their planet. He's finally arrived, and all right, you want your armor? I brought it home. I'm going to kick your butt. So, uh, yeah, it's been a really cool book. I mean, it's hard to believe that this story with the vine has been going. It's This is their year-long storyline yeah. so far. But they set everything up at first. Then they get you, you know, used to Eric with the armor. They set things up on Earth with the vine trying to take over the planet. And now he's going to settle a score. Been very, very cool. A good, uh, good first year for Valiant. Agreed. Agreed. I, you know what? I was talking to some retailer friends recently, though, who say it does not sell very well in their stores. Mm. So I'm kind of wondering how well it's doing around... Uh, the country, because I am doing very well with it. Mm. does very well here, but again, I'm reading the books, I'm pushing the books, and I like them. Good stuff. we got Harbinger number 10. This is, you know, kind of a continuation of what's been going on before. We've got uh, our characters have been captured, so what's going to happen? Harada is obviously pretty ticked off, but, you know, Bloodshot's got to be looming in here pretty soon because he's got those kids from Project Rising Spirit. I don't know. There's going to have to be an escape. you got some pretty powerful... You know, Harbinger's here. So, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm curious, and I've really been enjoying that one. Because that should launch us into this Harbinger Wars in the next couple of issues. Then I've got Revival number 8. This is by Tim Seeley and Mike Norton. This has been a great book. I am also an issue or two behind on this one. Um, it was starting to show sort of a bigger mystery with something with that alien in the woods, and that's got to have something to do with these these resurrected people. But just great artwork, really, really cool storytelling. I like these characters. I like the idea and the premise. Kinds of body parts oh, and nonsense on the, on the cover there. Yeah, it is pretty pretty gross. Then I've got uh, quite a big stack this week. I mean, there's a lot of books this week. Uh, my, my stack is pretty huge, but I, I am getting through it. Chew number 32. This is going to be part two of Bad Apples. The previous issue sort of introduces us to... The second half of the story, where it's going to go. It was the, the funeral of, of Tony's sister and, and explained some things that had happened in the past, a little backstory. And now we're going to see where this whole Bad Apples thing is actually going. Tony's back. The, the whole group seems to be doing their thing. They seem to have arrested Willy Wonka, which I don't know. Hmm. Okay. <laughs> Great book. Fun book. I'm curious <laughs> to see what the back half of this thing is going to be all about. The best book about food on the stands. Yeah, agreed. I would also say the best book about cannibalism on the mm -hmm. stands. Yep. This is Invincible 101. A nice big uh, first issue on the cover. 100 and is really small. <laughs> this is going to be a new direction. Uh, at this point, I don't feel like I'm going to spoil your fun. You should be caught up on 100 at this point. Mark is not dead, but everyone thinks he is. The, the cover is indicative of him possibly being dead. But there was, you know, uh, Eve had sort of had an, an abortion quite some time ago. She's pregnant again. Does this have something to do with her powers going screwy or what? I don't know. I mean, I don't know how Mark would have been able to... There's been a lot of going on for, for yeah. Mark and the crew here and, and everything that's going on. But this seems to be a new direction for, for the book. Uh, I, I think it's been, been really, really solid. The 100, like I said, it sort of wrapped up a lot of the loose threads they had had. It didn't blow me away, but it did set up a new direction. And I'm sure it's going to be great. Then I've got Saga number 11. Also not had a chance to read this, but now that you guys should all be uh, caught up on, on issue 10. Are you caught up or are you not caught I'm up? I'm not. I stopped right So now. can I not say what really upset me in issue 10? Oh, I, I actually did look at the last one. The, the, so the whole know. Lion Cat thing? Yeah. Oh, my God! <laughs> so I'm hoping that I'm not even going to look through this because yeah. if there's some kind of a swerve in Lion Cat's back, I don't want to know ahead of time. Such a great book, and the fact that mm -hmm. he really makes you feel, you know, by the end of every issue, you're yeah. always thinking, oh, my God, what, what are they doing? What's happening? This is a great book. They've got all, you know, most of our characters that we were worried about before have gotten put back in place. Our main cast was about to get captured, and then their ship gets blown up, and Lion Cat is floating in space. <laughs> what the heck is going on, Brian yeah. Cave on? Man, great, great book. I am He's really excited to read this pulling one. Pulling you in all kinds of different directions. He, he really is, and uh, great, great book. That takes me through the, the bulk of my stack. What are, you, what are you looking at this week? I'm going to start off with Justice League number 18. Uh, you know, we finished up the uh, Throne of Atlantis, and uh, in, in classic uh, superhero team style, they've decided it's time to expand the roster. 
All right. So, so, uh, so they're looking at uh, some characters here. We got Platinum. We got Firestorm. We've got, I think, Element Woman, Element Girl. Uh, looks like Vixen, Blue Devil. Uh, the Justice League basically uh, going to expand beyond that original seven. And uh, the, the issues where they where they do that, where they uh, interview and talk with uh, prospective new members, are always a lot of fun. You know, those uh, those type of stories have been going back a long time. And so now we get to see it in the uh, the new DC uh, 52, um, just as uh, the Justice League America is building at the same time. Yes. And a villain team, apparently. All of that's kind of happening at the same time. Uh, next up, Green Lantern, New Guardians, number 18. Uh, this is part seven of Wrath of the First Lantern. How long is that thing going to be? Uh, well, it's probably... Well, so it goes, up to, issues it goes per... up to 20, issue 20 of everything. Oh, okay. Is the last part of it. Uh, so that first lantern has been bouncing around uh, the the Green Lantern universe, basically messing around with all the different characters. It looks like in this one he uh, he's going to mess around with Larflees and with Star Sapphire, who's on the cover. And uh, he's basically... We still haven't figured out exactly what he's doing. He's bringing out strong emotions by showing people alternate realities, okay. uh, alternate versions of their lives, uh, triggering strong emotions and then feeding off that emotion to do something some, somewhere in the issue 20s of all of this. So uh, these have all just been kind of interesting little head trips with all of the various characters from these books, but it's still a lot of fun. Cool. Next up, uh, Comeback, issue number five. Uh, at the end of last issue, like everything got changed and reset and time yes. tra time travels messy and uh and you think that you think that it's going along you think that the story is like all right we're in that last stretch and the people know it happened because in some way it's linear <laughs> yeah. so that's happening in the past but in the present like oh man they yeah. reset it it's going down right now and you'll have like somebody sitting there in the very next panel at someone else because that person got killed in the past uh so yeah it's jumping around a lot i'll admit there are moments where i'm getting kind of confused I am starting um, to as well, but because, I still really like it. Yeah, but it's jumping around a lot. I get the feeling this is one of those books that at the end, when you read it all at once, because that one month gap can kind of make you forget. Uh, one of the one of the problems with uh, a lot of, of comic books, uh, and, and it actually makes you really understand just how smart the guys who sort of set the stuff up in the Golden Age were. When you've got characters who are dressed in normal clothes, sometimes it's harder to tell them apart. That's why they came up with superhero costumes because, you know, a lot of artists draw kind of like the same face on everybody and the, really only the hair color is different. So when you've got a normal human name and a normal looking guy, sometimes you forget who's who. But with superhero, right. that, that's why I think superheroes work so well. Is it's pretty obvious the guy with the big S on his chest is Superman. And it doesn't right. matter how different people draw him. But it's still really a, a really good book. And uh, it, it's just a I matter like of I'm having a hard time keeping the, the timeline straight because it does – it jumps like 66 days ago, the present, and sometimes I can't tell which is the, because the guy looks the same as he did 66 days ago, so I can't remember which things are happening in the present and the past. I think when it's all said and done, you go back and reread it all in a linear fashion, uh, it'll make a lot more sense. But yeah, last issue was like, all of a sudden, everything's changed. Yeah, oh, okay. All right, kind of cool. Speaking of time travel, we got all new X-Men. Uh, this is number nine. Uh, it looks like we got Stuart Immonen back, and with some Sentinels, some big-ass Sentinels. Awesome! Uh, great, great artwork. Issue eight was fantastic. Yeah, this is this back. This book has been fantastic, just all together. Agreed. Uh, yeah, I think both of the uh, the X Men titles that Bendis are doing. Uh, this is again the the young X Men in the present. It looks like they're taking on Sentinels. Um, Jean Grey's a badass. Got, yeah. Oh, she at the the very end of last issue was kind of scary. Yup. And uh, you're like, oh yeah, that's right. She nearly destroyed everything, didn't she? Um, so yeah, there's. This 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 book is not good. It's not quite what it's going to seem. It's uh, I think there's a little bit more danger, a little more threat to these kids than anybody really anticipated. Uh, looks like we're we're heading towards a, a showdown with the other school of mutants run by Cyclops, uh, in in the other book. But really really great stuff. Uh, looks like we got some Sabretooth in here too. I know he was dead for a while, but now he's back. And yeah, uh, and yeah it looks like uh, I got some Mystique too. So the the whole X Men universe has really been given. Just kind of a whole brand new direction um, with uh, with Bendis, and I think it's really yeah, good some stuff. cool stuff. Next up, Nova number two. Uh, this is very very different Nova. Um, yes, I, I kind of like that. It does not tie into the Richard Rider Nova. This Nova is much younger. His father was apparently a Nova, and I guess there's these Black Dome Novas. They're called yeah. Supernovas, or they call themselves Supernovas. They're like an elite team. 
um, that, that think that the uh, gold helmeted Novas are a bunch of sissies. Uh, but this guy's father was apparently a Nova, and uh, something happened to him, and now Rocket Raccoon, uh, who I always dig, and uh, Gamora have shown up to say, we've got to talk about your father. The art's gorgeous. Oh, gorgeous artwork. Uh, Ed McGinnis is always fantastic. Well, this is some of the best stuff I've seen out of McGinnis in a long yeah. time. I thought some of his stuff on Red Hulk was very sloppy. Well, I think in, in, he got into the habit here, and I think in that X-Men cable thing, he's really good at drawing big, super muscular guys, fighting it out. And, uh, and, you know, it's a lot of fun, but now he's back doing just kind of traditional storytelling. I mean, Nova's a small guy. He's a kid. So he's not, not kind of resting on the laurels of drawing big, muscled guys. He's actually back doing some, some pretty straightforward storytelling. Looks like we got the Watcher. Whenever the Watcher shows up, you know something's going down. Mm-hmm. I really like the new uh, Nova costume redesign. Looks cool. Uh, so far, this has been a really good book. Next up, Ultimate Comics uh, Spider-Man number 21. Uh, Miles Morales is now taking on uh, Ultimate Venom. Okay. Uh, I don't remember where Ultimate Venom left off, uh, and actually he's trying to remember how uh, Peter Parker beat Be- Venom the first time around. Uh, Miles' uh, father, oh, that's kind of weird, oh. is, uh, is, was injured in the fight. I mean, this is showing some more repercussions. Uh, this Venom is a lot different, a lot more deadly. Looks a lot uh, different. He, he's more, more monstrous than, uh, than the, the regular Marvel Comics Venom. And uh, we've got looks like we got some Mary Jane and Gwen Stacy popping up too. So he's uh, connecting back to the classic Peter Parker stuff. Cool. Uh, this has been a really good book. Great artwork by Sarah Pacelli. Uh, it's really nice seeing Miles having to take on the types of things that Peter Parker took on, but with a very different dynamic in his family. He doesn't he doesn't know how to make web fluid. Okay. Uh, so his his friend he he got Peter's formula, but he's not a scientist. Friend of his uh, basically decides to make some, and he's done a horrible job, and it doesn't really do anything. So it's really interesting seeing somebody else trying to be Spider-Man and not quite pulling it off. Next up, we've got Action Comics number 18. For the last three months, we've been saying this is Grant Morrison's final issue. Uh, it was originally supposed to be 16, and then it keeps getting right. kind of expanded. But this is Grant Morrison's last issue on the title. Uh, it's Grant Morrison against the Demon from Dimension 5, which is kind of Mitzelplik, but it's not Mitzelplik. It's Vindictivus, okay. but Mitzelplik is kind of in here too. Um, it ties into the kind of a death of Superman sort of thing. There's a, a character similar to Doomsday in here. The Legion's in here. Uh, this is really wrapping up a lot of stuff that Grant Morrison has been planting the seeds of. All the way back in Action Comics number one, you get references to the Legion. All Basically, this is kind of the conclusion to Grant's introduction to the new Superman uh, and it's been pretty solid stuff. Uh, great artwork by uh, by Rags Morales. Uh, all of the stuff happening in Dimension X, this kind of the new take on Doomsday is, is sort of interesting. Cool. Um, and uh, it's all just sort of fitting together. Uh, it's really interesting, this this ending storyline, I don't know if it's intentional or not, but a lot of the elements like Mitzelplik and the Legion and uh, the death of Superman and the big gold statue, all of these actually popped up uh, way back in... Uh, Alan Moore's last Superman story. So I don't know if he's deliberately uh, trying to kind of like use some of those elements in his final Superman story, because after this, uh, Morrison's done with mainstream superheroes for a while, This and and the upcoming ending of his uh, Batman Incorporated run. So I don't know if it's coincidence or if he's just ripping off Alan Moore or... Uh, or what's going on. That crazy old wizard stuff. would probably say you just keep ripping them off. It, yeah, who knows? But uh, this is good stuff. Very, very good and stuff. And that issue also has a blank white variant this week. Oh, cool. That's so for the first time, we got a blank white on a Superman book. Nice. Very nice. Uh, next up, we've got Avengers number eight. Uh, this is Jonathan Hickman. I don't know how Hickman has done it, but he has really made the incorporation of the new universe and the Marvel universe really, really cool. Yeah, I agree. Uh, agree. The stuff that happened at the end of last issue just shows you how terrifying the reality of something like the new universe could be. Uh, Not going to give away too much, but something is going down. There's a problem in the universe. When there's a problem, then uh, the white event happens and starts creating these uh, additional heroes. Uh, Some of the stuff was was touched upon in um, Warren Ellis' New Universal. That's some of the similar ideas as that. Uh, It looks like we actually are even tying back to some of the stuff that Hickman has already done. Which is what um, he does. Yep. So, yeah, I mean, here we've got one big kind of universe-threatening uh, occurrence that uh, that ties into uh, another book that we'll be talking about in just a second. So does that bring me to the top of my stack That's top here? top of your stack. All right, so I'm looking at Five Ghosts, The Haunting of Fabian Gray, number one. 
This is going to be a five-issue miniseries by Image Comics. This is written by uh, Frank J. Barbier, Barbary, Barbier, with art by Chris Mooneyham. Art's fantastic. Mm. The little tagline to give you here is, After a tragic encounter with an artifact known as the Dreamstone, infamous treasure hunter Fabian Gray was possessed by five literary ghosts and has been granted access to their unique abilities. Hmm, interesting. The art looks very pulpy. It yeah. looks a little sci-fi-y in here. Really just some neat, cool, like, you know, big science fiction yeah. 50s kind of stuff. But then you got, like, the pulpy monster stuff. It looks like a cool book, and I'm yeah. I'm looking forward to reading it. Want to check that out? That's kind of an interesting throwback uh, vibe to yeah, like yeah. 50s comics and 60s comics, the DC horror line, or some of the EC books. Really interesting looking stuff. Yeah, I'm I'm excited about that one. The art is fantastic. I've not heard of, heard of this Chris Mooneyham at yeah, all. Me either. Hmm. Yeah, bravo. Cool. Uh, my top pick uh, is another Hickman Avengers book. This is New Avengers number four. Uh, if you look at the cover, you got Galactus. So we got Jonathan Hickman, we got Galactus. Uh, I'm not exactly sure what's going on, if this is this universe or an alternate universe. Uh, once again, our universe was threatened. Captain America beat it back with the Infinity Gauntlet. Uh, and now they're looking for ways to prevent this incursion from happening again. Uh, it looks like they've got some Galactus stuff going on. And didn't they need to try and get the gems from another dimension as the other I one think has so. been destroyed? So I think that's part of what's going on, and too. It looks like they're uh, fighting off against uh, Terax, an, an alternate dimensional Terax. Uh, so, yeah, this is this is really big stuff. It's the Illuminati. Uh, it's uh, Reed Richards, Black Bolt, uh, Submariner, Iron Man, The Beast, uh, Doctor Strange. Great stuff. Um, Hickman's yeah. great with big ideas. The Avengers is a bunch of big ideas. New Avengers is actually even bigger ideas. Both of them are dealing with these kind of world-shattering things, so I'm wondering if it's all going to kind of collide together. I'm sure in, it will. In uh, Hickman's big uh, Avengers-based crossover that's coming up sometime in the next couple months or so. But uh, great stuff. Anytime Galactus pops up, I'm there, and if Hickman's writing it, even better. Uh, well, he's done a great job with Galactus already. Very so. much. And I'm sure he's using, you know, similar Galactus traits to what he's already set and, up. And, and so. you know, it's got Steve Epting on the artwork, so it's uh, definitely got much of the feel. And Reed Richards, a little bit of a reunion. So there. it's it's kind of uh, continuing some of the stuff that uh, that he let that he finished off the Fantastic Four with, but now expanding it out to the rest of the Marvel Universe, which for me is great stuff. Absolutely agreed. So uh, with that, that is your weekend geek. Mm-hmm.